Hi. Well, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Shrinkwrapped. I'm Allison Colorisi here with Dr. David Colorisi, and we are here with another episode of Shrinkwrapped. And we are here remotely from Breckenridge, Colorado. How are you? Do- how are you doing, Dr. Dave? You know, do you know what I feel like? Hmm. I feel like when we, you know, like when we send the kids to their room, and they, they the kids have misbehaved, and they've been sent off to their room, hmm. and then we bring them downstairs, and then they come like sort of like. <laughs> Sorry, mom. That's how I feel. Why are you feeling like that? Because you probably didn't know this, but <laughs> apparently some people on the internet, and by some I mean everybody that watched the video of our last podcast, thought that I was mean to you. Hmm. I feel seen and heard. Thank you. Allison? I, I didn't take it as mean because that's how you flirt with me. So David's flirting is very um, um, elementary school kid on the playground. I'm not sure I would describe it that way. <laughs> sophisticated elementary. A, six to, a sophisticated third grader. Okay, so here's what I think. Here's my... Here, first of all, if people felt like I was being mean, my intention obviously wasn't to be mean. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I should just say this. The format for the podcast is we do a story at the start that if you look at everyone, we try, I usually try to tell some kind of funny story. And then you say, let's talk about this topic. And then we talk about tips for how to handle that thing. Well, last week's podcast, I did two stories and they happened to both be about Allison. And... I had just bought a new camera, so we did one camera on me, one camera on Allison, and it's hard to edit that whole thing together, so I used Autopod that like edits it yourself, or or itself, so it's just AI editing. So it just records your voice, and then you get the camera on you. So I think I was making fun of you, and no one could see whether or not you're laughing, versus, like, so they just think I'm like just talking shit, and not like knowing how it's landing, and so I think that that, that exacerbated the impact of my bad stories. It sounds like an excuse. <laughs> I also want you to know that it bugs me that you've somehow, like, I don't know, I understand how this channel turned into a, like a, an Allison army. But you it's have an not army all, of It people. is not always that, but I do appreciate it. And I feel <laughs> like everyone should have one. Listen into an argument to see, like, hmm. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, imagine every time you got in a fight, then the <laughs> internet's like, they were really wrong. Yeah. But we and I think even... you would usually be wrong. I don't think so. <laughs> I There's a part of me, I, I will say there's a part of me that wonders if some ta- somehow we've cultivated an army that isn't on my team to start. I think you need to reflect on that. That's what everybody said. Everybody goes... <laughs> You're a psychologist. You should watch that back and decide what kind of human you are. Agreed. Can I have my tea back? I thought we were sharing it. Okay. Um, Well, do you have a story for this week, then? I'm I'm gun-shy. I have no stories. (laughs) No stories? No, that was my story. Oh, man. David. Do you have a story? Uh, No. No good stories. Should we talk about our book club? No, because we are dropping the ball on that. My cousin will probably watch this after. I think he. I think they watch this. Okay. But what's the book? The um. The six and the daisy. Daisy something and the six. So anyway, mm-hmm. whatever. We're in a book club with my cousin and his wife, and his wife Julie. I think it was her idea. I don't know. All I can tell you is we're in a book club. And they are like voracious readers. And they get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I think, and read every day. And we keep pushing this book club back. And so then, like, <laughs> so we bought it as a book on tape, and we were driving to the mountains, and Allison's like, here, we're just going to listen to the book, no problem. <laughs> and we plug it in, and it goes, it's nine hours of this book we have to listen to. Well, and it's good. I don't, it is a good book. But also, when you're listening to it, you can't figure out all the different characters that are happening. There's yeah. like 20 characters. So we're a little lost, but hopefully we, we finish in time. No, no. So I 
was like, well, we just have to be honest with them. We weren't able to read the entire book. And then Allison goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> I looked it up on Amazon. And there's a movie. <laughs> so we're going to watch the movie and not tell them. And then do the book club. I feel deceitful. We haven't done any... We haven't, I don't know when we're watching the movie, though, because we also have a birthday party and stuff tomorrow. We're busy. Yeah. And the book club's tomorrow afternoon. After the birthday party? Yeah. I, I think we got to push it. Because you also are going to be cake making tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. David makes a special cake every birthday for the kids. They get to choose what they want for the cake. And David is a master... I mean, we all have gifts, right? And a master maybe cake maker. baking cakes is my biggest gift. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> the, oh, they're not. They're not that good. Oh jeez. <clears throat> so anyway, I have an important topic today. Okay. I feel. Do you ever feel, David, like when you are around certain people, they make you feel like Eeyore? Like you, you like go in to say hi to them, and you're like. Hey, how's it going? And then they're like, the sky is falling. And every time you see them, the sky is falling or something. Yes. Um, I would say those are people are, are toxic. What do you think? Is that a toxic person? They're able to shape shift your energy. Yeah, I mean, I would avoid those people. Yes. I, I, don't, like the, I don't like the, here's what I'm reacting to. There are, like, psychology gurus out there that, like, the term toxic person gets thrown around a lot. And I think that I don't like that it's a, it feels like it's a very permanent label. Like, it's, it's really, we're just, subs- <coughs> we're like really just substituting the word toxic for narcissist or anti, you know, sociopath. Or, like, this is a bad person and they're toxic. And I don't like that description. So I, I, if I were trying to be oppositional, which I'm not, this is the new me and I, <laughs> whatever you think, if you say toxic, then I say toxic also. <laughs> but if I was being oppositional, I would say my first like entry into it would be like, I don't know that there's a benefit to call people toxic. Okay. Well, how do you recognize someone that is not good to be around and what do you label that person? <laughs> I mean, for the lay person, that's like a good term, right? Loser or toxic? Toxic. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, yes. I guess what I would say is, uh, what I'm reacting to is thinking about someone who is, I think there are people that are really toxic in that they are, you know, they they have such a bad psychological or emotional reaction that you know they create such a, a negative internal reaction that they destroy your day and i would say that's toxic yeah but somebody who is not good for you to be around um i think they're just people you don't want to be around you don't like that you know Some deep thoughts with dr day <laughs> what <laughs> how do you recognize <coughs> like Okay, so I feel like where people go wrong is they consistently hang out with people and they don't recognize how that person impacts their energy and how it makes them feel. And so they consistently, they want to be friends with that person or they want to be with that family member, but when they make plans and actually spend time with that person, that person makes them feel bad, sucks their energy, and it has nothing to do with them being mean. It's just that they, like, are maybe in a swirl of drama all the time. Okay, I take or it back. A, okay, 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 okay. I take it back. You're right. Uh, we can use the word toxic. toxic. Okay. I'm trying to think, why do I not like the word toxic? And I don't like the word toxic because it suggests that it's a permanent state and a universal state. Like, if, someone, if, some, if you tell people that David's toxic then the implication is that I am always toxic and I am toxic for everybody. But I think for some people, you can be not, it can not be good for you to hang out with David. I have a good word for you. What? Contraindicated. That person is contraindicated. For you. 
for you. Yeah. So like, doesn't do you like that? Yes. Okay. I, 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 that's a better word. <laughs> okay. They're contraindicated for you, <laughs> and I think it's a good thing to like to to think about it that way, right? So somebody is not they're not a bad person, they're not universally bad, but like, you don't want a heavy dose of them because it cause it makes you unhappy. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, so then how do you recognize that that person is contraindicated for you? And then how do you, you know, put some distance between you and that? Because sometimes family members are contraindicated for you. What do you think? You go first. No, I'm asking the psychologist. Although I came up with the word contraindicated, which was a good one. You <laughs> did. You did. So what do you think? What do you, you go, what do you think? I think it's an energy thing. So, you know, I feel like immediately when someone is contraindicated for me, like my whole being change feels different. Like I get, I feel sometimes people like I'll, I'll come into a situation excited, excited for life and hang out with them for a few minutes and like I feel like I leave feeling depressed. Yeah. So that would be a a person that's contraindicated for me. Yeah. Or someone that's like constantly draws you in with their personal drama that has it's a drama and usually they're not um accountable for it and you can't tell them like hmm, well actually, you know, it's probably you. It's interesting. I think that the I'm really a fan of, of the term contraindicated. <laughs> because the, the, the challenge is, with, if you use the word toxic, my mind goes to, okay, well, why is this person toxic for you? Are they toxic for you because something's wrong with you? Like, are, are, is your baggage creating the toxicity? Mm-hmm. Right? But in which case I would say, well, that person's not toxic. Maybe your problem. Contraindicated suggests that there's something between the two of you. <laughs> That makes it not work out. Yeah. And so I think for the, if that's the way you're looking at it, then being really aware of what your emotional experience is, I think is valuable. And I think it is valuable for you to be really conscious about it. I think it's really important in any relationship when there's friction or when things are going well to be able to know who owns that. Mm-hmm. Are you and I connecting because... Out, am, am I connected with my wife because my wife is putting all the energy into it or do I get to own am I doing something right there also mm-hmm. right just like if we're fighting I have to ask myself alright are we fighting because what part, what part of it is mine and what part of it is hers and I think it's the same thing when any relationship the more intentional you can be about going like okay this works why mm-hmm. right and if, and if somebody is contraindicated for you then the answer is to either change your side of it if you can and if you can't then I mean you have two two options one is leave or don't over personalize whatever's happening mm-hmm. right that's that's what that's why toxic people are dangerous is that you spend time with them and you make their emotional position or you make the emotion that they trigger in you uh, you, you give it power you give it you give it the air to grow yeah when you shouldn't. And I mean, just to stick on the word contraindicated, if, if they are contraindicated, usually an adverse event happens. So I feel like I, I think about a family member that always is drawing me into their personal drama. And I definitely get drawn in because I think I want to help. And I love my family member. But really, really, every time I get drawn in, an adverse event happens. We should get a shirt that says, like, I love you, but you're contraindicated. Yes, or a cup. Like, I love you, but we... But we're contraindicated. <laughs> it totally yeah. works. Yeah. Um, but you're wanting tips for how do you deal with toxic or contraindicated people. One, avoid them if you can. Mm-hmm. Like give, empower yourself to uh, not spend time with them. Two is... Don't make their stuff your stuff. Like if somebody is a major buzzkill or somebody is, you know, angry all the time or they're whatever, unhappy, that's not yours. Mm-hmm. 
depersonalize any criticism about you, if they're critical of you, be good about setting the ba- a boundary between the two of you. Mm-hmm. I would also say, this is probably more controversial, but I do think that if you are the psychologically stable person in a relationship, it is on you, or you should be empowered to navigate and control that relationship. So, for example, if you're interacting with somebody who is contraindicated or toxic, <laughs> you, you instead of walking in there and going like, great, my afternoon is at the whim of this lunatic, mm-hmm. think to yourself... I can, depending on how I show up in this interaction is going to dictate what this looks like. I can be nice and accommodating and I can play into their stuff or I can do me and be distant and combative and create friction and I get to decide what do I want that to look like. And I think having that sense of power um, will reduce the level of distress. If Mm -hmm. you know that whatever that interaction looks like, is a consequence of your de- your conscious decision. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's true, but like if you go in, so say you go into the, you're having lunch with the contraindicated person, and they're trying to draw you in, and if you smile at them and say, "Yeah," like that's if you, if you allow them to have what they want then they will continue to have that um, dynamic in your relationship. So do you have a tip for not, for not allowing them to ha- have that dynamic? Mm, I think I don't. Okay. Be- because, because I think that, that you are not responsible for somebody else's emotional position. Like you can't control. It's like, the, it's like trying to control the behavior of a narcissist. There are lots of people on the internet that drive me nuts because they have all of the, like this protocol for dealing with a narcissist. And oftentimes the protocol is consequencing the narcissist for their behavior. And if somebody is really toxic or really a narcissist or really contraindicated, okay, you, you are, it is a, it's a, it's an uphill battle if you think you are going to change their behavior or how they, like you mm-hmm. can't, you can't go, I'm going to, you know, psychologically slap them on the wrist so that they stop acting that way. You can, you can only control yourself, and that's what you should be focused on. What makes you happy in that interaction? Okay. Does that, does that mean you distance from them? Does it mean that you consequence them? Does it mean that you placate them? Whatever, but you're doing it for you, not because you're trying to control them. Yeah. What do you think? You, seem, you don't seem convinced by that logic. Well, I agree with that. And I have a contraindicated person in my life that I feel like tries to control me. How do I handle that person? Who's the person? Who's the person? <laughs> Which one? I'll cut it. Who is it? Oh, okay. Yes. So I have a I have a a contraindicated person in my life that I feel mm-hmm. like tries to control me mm-hmm. and he really um he really aggravates me Mm -hmm. because of that and I find myself not wanting to do anything that he wants me to do because I don't like being controlled Mm -hmm. so I own I so reflecting back I own that I don't like being controlled but how should I handle that how do you want to handle it well I want to give him the middle finger well what's wrong with that because you said I that's not a good way to do it because I you shouldn't consequence someone. No, no, no. Okay, this is good. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to do. I'm saying it's a bad thing to do if the goal is to control him. So if you if he's bothering you and you think I'm going to give him the middle finger and I'm really going to put a shock <laughs> to the system and then he's not going to be an a-hole, that would be a futile effort. But <laughs> If your desire is to give him the finger so that you feel better, then I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Right? It's the so it's like to me it's like okay, you could look at him, <laughs> you, you it's like you could look at him and go, you know what? I'm better off ignoring him. I'm better off 
not personalizing his criticisms. Mm -hmm. I'm better off placating him and just doing what he would like to avoid the friction, or I'm better off giving him the finger and creating a lot of conflict. I think all those are viable solutions if you're doing them because it makes those answers will make you happier. If the goal is I'm going to change that guy's world, then I think you have a problem. Yeah. What if I want that goal? What? To change his world? It's not going to happen. I think (laughs) that's probably not going to (laughs) happen. Yeah. You could get him a contraindicated shirt, though. Just, I love you, but we're contraindicated. (laughs) I actually think it's, like, the best thing ever. It's so true. Like, for dating, when you break up with people... I have a friend that... um, that just broke up with his girlfriend and I just feel like she was contraindicated and he knew ahead of, way ahead of time. Yeah, I think that's you. I think you're onto something. Merch to, merch to follow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a birthday party to get to. We will be doing kickboxing at the birthday party. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Love Until you, thank next you. time. Love you.